When you think of the Roman frontier, you may picture something like Hadrian's Wall in what's now northern England. But Rome's frontier extended thousands of miles through Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. Rivers marked much of it in Europe, and the impenetrable Sahara marked much in Africa. But the Middle East was a different story. There, Rome needed a defensible border. In what are now Jordan and Syria, they created a series of forts called the Limes Arabicus. And in this desert landscape, you can still today find a remarkable survivor of that time, Kasser Bashir. Built under Diocletian around AD 300, somehow this fortlet has largely escaped the ravages of 1700 years. It retains all of its walls, some to nearly their full height, and because of this, it doesn't take too much imagination to turn this into this. Welcome to Kasser Bashir. Curiously, even being so well preserved, very little archaeology has been done here. The fort was surveyed at the end of the 19th century, and then briefly examined in the 1980s, but otherwise little touched. In many ways, Kasser Bashir is an enigma. It retains its inscription above the entrance gate, in situ, an incredible survival. Yet the inscription doesn't mention the name of the unit that built and manned it, only that the fort was called Mobene. So who did man this fort? Who was in charge? How many soldiers were stationed here? What kind of soldiers were they? We really don't know. In the ruins of the internal walls, surveyors found niches that they took to be mangers or troughs for horses. About 20 such rooms lined the inside of the curtain walls with three niches each. If these were troughs, this would represent a cavalry unit about 60 strong, two termi to apply a Roman name. A cavalry fort does make sense, mobile enough to patrol the rolling desert and to maintain quick links with the forts of El Lejeune to the southwest and Thuraya to the north. So I have arranged my Kasser Bashir to reflect this with stabling on the ground floor and soldier quarters above. Even though the unit serving here must have been small, barely a tenth the size of a Hadrian's Wall fort, it still had large needs. For one thing, it needed food, possibly carted in from El Lejeune, and most likely cooked out in the open air. It needed water, sourced at a cistern. It needed a smithy to maintain weapons and gear also likely an open-air arrangement. And it needed an administrative center. The large building at the back of the complex likely served this role, a place to secure gear, documents, and pay. In my version, I've even added in a small shrine, which was a mainstay of larger forts. And the commander, whatever his title and role, needed some kind of personal accommodation. Command of 60 soldiers would probably put such a person at the level of Tecurian or Centurion. So I've reflected that here. A guarded entrance to stable and storeroom, with his private residence above. And that, sadly, already takes us to the edge of our actual knowledge about Kasser Bashir. Was there a granary here? A bathhouse? Was there a hamlet or a village outside the walls? Was it really a cavalry fort? And, in this arid climate, might written documents still survive amid the rubble, revealing bits of ancient life on the eastern frontier? These are all unknowns. Kaiser Bashir is a trove of information just waiting to be explored. Hopefully, in the years to come, archaeologists will be able to descend upon it and tease out its secrets before they really are lost.